Well, welcome to Coffee with Job, the last one for this week on Friday. And we come to the end of the magnificent chapter 19, which we've taken some time to look at. And I hope you've found it as encouraging and as, as helpful as I have. I mean, what, what hope do we have in this world other than just Christ, our hope, our redeemer? It's, and yet, at the end, this is what Job says, verse 28. He doesn't stop, you see there. He, he goes on to give a warning. If you say, how will we hound him? Since the root of the trouble lies in him, you should fear the sword yourselves, for wrath will bring punishment by the sword, and then you will know that there is judgment. It would be nice, wouldn't it, if Christians could just present a message which was everything's love, everything's nice, everything's good. Why do people have to keep going on about judgment? Why does that appear in the Bible? How unchristlike is that? Well, actually not at all. Christ <coughs> speaks more about judgment than anyone else. But I'm fascinated with this phrase, the root of the trouble or the root of the matter. I remember being on the island of Lewis and they were talking about someone coming to church and uh, one of the elders said, oh, well, the root of the matter is in him. And he was talking about being a Christian and having the root of the matter, having the heart. It's really important. And what Job's friends have been saying to him is, the reason you are suffering, the real reason, the deep down reason, the root of the trouble is because of your sin. And Job turns this around and he warns Bildad. He says, be careful your own words do not rebound on you. Your judgment is really quite superficial and you yourself will be judged. You are pursuing me. You're saying it's all my fault and that the only reason for suffering is sin. And I'm telling you, you be careful. Now, I think it's something to bear in mind that the name for the devil is the accuser, Satan, the accuser. The devil came before God to accuse Job. In Revelation, we're told that he is the accuser of the brothers and sisters. We need to be careful we don't fall into that same trap. We can accuse ourselves and we can accuse other people. Now that's not saying that we've not to have discernment, but ultimate judgment is to be left only to God. So Job's saying, this is my hope, what's yours? He had so much hope and yet he was probably contemporary with Abraham and the patriarchs and <coughs> knew a lot less about Christ than we do and yet he had this hope. Well, I want to just finish up this section by going to Psalm 73. Because for me, it was a very powerful psalm in lots of different ways. And it's about this accusation and this, this hope as well. In verse 25 and 26 of Psalm 73, the psalmist says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I remember when I read that, initially being quite convicted by it, saying, well, actually, I've got lots of other different things. And being honest with myself, you know, I thought I was, I was then just about to get married and I was thinking, well, I've got Annabelle and eventually children would come. I've got my parents, I've got friends, I've got lots and lots of things and I've got lots of things I desire. But I think what it's saying is also what Job is saying, that when everything is taken away, the one sure hope you have is Christ. And to be honest, when everything is here, the one sure hope you have is Christ. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. There really is a warning here. There's hope, but there's a warning. And the warning is this, if your hope is not in Christ, then you are doomed. Christ is offered to each one of you. 
May God bless you and may you know him. I mean, those of us who do know him, walk in the light, walk in his strength, walk in his hope. Take his warning seriously, but rejoice in his grace and glory. We have Romans 8, speaking about hope on Sunday at 11 o'clock, or perhaps even earlier. If I remember rightly, I put it earlier now. And uh, then back to Job on Monday. See you then. Bye.